That's so good, man. Hello, everyone. I'm sat here today in these trees, in this little bit of woodland, just contemplating some of the things people see, some of the things people experience. I'm just having a little bit of downtime, really, and uh, I've put a voice recorder over in tree there, a K2 meter. I have a camera that's taking infrared images, as you can hear. So I'm just taking them randomly. I don't expect to catch anything, but it's interesting because you'll hear me many times say, whatever it is that's interacting, whatever it is that's, I don't know, whatever it is that's engaging with humans as a species is doing it when we least expect it. So me sat here now, kind of asking for the phenomena, hoping something might happen, uh, is probably not going to work, but what else can I do? And let's face it, it's better than spending an afternoon in front of TV. So I've just got a few things that I want to I wanna talk about, that I want to share with you guys. So while I'm sat here, myself and uh, the Bobster, look, there he is, looking at me intently, because he can't wait to get moving again. He's very impatient, but uh, if he's two years old now, it makes him a 14-year-old, doesn't it? So... I think as a teenager we were all impatient, but he's going to have to wait a little bit. So as I've just said, I'm taking pictures in the infrared spectrum. There you go. Just randomly snapping images. And does it make you wonder what could potentially be all around us all of the time? Things that we can't see. You, do you know, a few weeks ago on the cliff tops, one of the guys who was with us just shone his torch along the contours of the land and just above, at arm's length, we're looking at, say, I don't know, 200 yards away. And it were about there, but just a bit higher, you know, it were in the sky. His torch beam touched something in the sky that just lit up as a white disc, like a small moon. I saw it, Mark saw it, and it just blinked out as quick as it appeared. But that was there. Was that something observing us? It was definitely in the field with us. And I realised that all this is anecdotal. You know, someone said in the comments uh, a few weeks ago on one of the shorts I put up, these are interesting, but there's no proof of anything. Unfortunately, this is unexplained phenomena, my friend, and it is, as the subtitle of my first book states, it is the truth that leaves no proof, because when it's impacted a person, when you've seen it up close and personal, it's ingrained in your mind, it's almost tattooed into your mind, and you can never get it out. Unfortunately, it rarely leaves any tangible proof that we can show to you guys. All we can do is relay these accounts and stories, but there's enough of them out there to clearly say that this phenomenon, whatever it may be, is here and is presenting. But the invisible spectrum, that we can, the things that are present that we can't see, the disjointed voices, the things that have occurred in Danes Dyke to people, uh, the young lady who went to, for a wee behind some trees when she was with her family, and she started shouting for her husband to come and help because she said, hands were pressing down on her shoulders that's impossible we all know that but that's what she's stating i don't know what he's doing look early this year in the other side of dane's dyke people were chased out of the dyke by a sphere of light and that's the words that i would use because they went running in fear from a sphere of white light the size of a football that they'd seen about five to six foot off the ground so once again we've got things that just should not exist these spheres of light that just manifest out of nowhere i've been reading recently and people have been sending me links to scientific data that supports the theory 
that the spheres of light that people have reported seeing for decades and decades could be some form of intelligent plasma. Well, I'm no scientist, but 22 years ago, my first website was called ILF UFO, Intelligent Light Forms, because I believe the lights that we were watching, the lights that we were observing on the East Yorkshire walls had some kind of intelligence to them. So I said, why couldn't it be? intelligent light so i'm not saying i'm the forerunner to what these people are contemplating and considering as a possibility now but uh, the words ilf ufo intelligent light forms was out there 22 years ago for my website and that was the very reason that i named it ilf ufo because of the potential that these lights could have an intelligence to them and i find it fascinating now that people are considering it could be intelligent plasma and what if this intelligent plasma the spheres of light seen in Danes Dyke for example the spheres of light that people see in woodlands and then see in conjunction with a cryptid sighting in America a Bigfoot sighting what if these spheres of light can morph into other things what if they can take on the shape and the the, the kind of texture of something akin to a Bigfoot. It would explain some things when you consider that people describe these things as moving as though they're on a conveyor belt. When these things walk behind a tree as thick as that and don't come out other side, there's definitely something going on. I mean, I've said so many times that we are a skeptic's absolutely dream scenario. Because the stories that I'm talking about, the stories that I tell that other people have relayed to me, they just don't make any sense. The locations, the things are seen, uh, the, the sounds that people hear in places where it's just impossible for s these sounds to be heard. Prime example is the young guy that I met on the beach a few months ago, camped in the dike. And he said beside him, he heard a sound that sounded like steel cranking or dragging on concrete uh, just break down that sound you heard and, but you, you, when we first spoke you said it sounded a little bit like steel rusting steel yeah like that's my impression of it that's yeah. what it sounded like someone was cranking something so just to recap the k2 meter is doing nothing the voice recorder is probably just picking up a little bit of Paul Sinclair as he's talking and nothing more, but that's no big deal. Uh, if I don't put it on and some strange sound does emanate from the outer nowhere, it's only my word, isn't it? We've just got to keep trying and that's all we can do, any of us, even the Bobster. So I'd just like to say thank you for listening. If you've got any views on what I've said, providing they're not abusive, just put them in the comments and don't forget to press the like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.